Bonne soirée, bon appétit. <laughs> oh my God. Amazing. Uh, so this is influenced by uh, Puerto Rico. And um, yeah, I lived there for 10 years growing up. And so we're doing a rotisserie lemon garlic chicken with a bunch of herbs in it. And below it, Puerto Rican rice with zucchini. And look at that, how beautiful that is. So you need to watch this video to see how to do it. Also, for the folks that do have El Corno Flambe rotisserie, I answered a lot of questions that you had through emails and comments. So I hope I addressed your uh, questions, Jennifer, and so on. Bonsoir, bon appétit. Okay, so I'm preparing my chicken for rotisserie. And I don't see a lot of videos about this. And it is really important that you do this right. So, here's my chicken, it's defrosted, and actually it was never frozen, um, but I'm sure they had it frozen. This is an organic chicken, and a lot of people have asked me why you get the organic chickens. The more expensive, the, uh, you know, they cost a lot more. Well, it's pretty simple. The reason is, a happy chicken will taste better. I learned that in France. Now in France, these chickens are almost like yellow. And it's what they feed them, and because they're let into the range. So this chicken is organic, it's free range, and it's not fed or antibiotics and all that stuff. It's just a real chicken. Um, so, I try to buy chickens from uh, the farmer's market when I can, um, and then my backup is the grocery store, but I only get organic. I look at the color, and if you notice the color of this chicken, it's really pretty. Now, I'm taking my chicken out, and I want to take it out 30 minutes before I'm ready to... Uh, prepare it. And I wanted to bring it up for 30 minutes to room temperature. What that's going to do is that it's going to, a cold chicken, all the juices go to the, the outside of the meat. And by bringing it to room temperature, the, the, the juices inside the meat kind of settle where they should be throughout. I mean, I'm not a scientist, but that's how somebody wants to explain it to me, and makes sense to me. So what I like to do is I like to pat dry the chicken and just get all that liquid off of it. I'm going to save my my neck and all that um, liver and all that because I'm going to probably make a pate out of it. Yeah, I should make a video on that. It's not hard, you know. All right. Okay. Now I'm gonna pat dry the inside, and I do that last because I don't want to do the inside then the outside. There we go. Drop that. More. And I'm gonna take this guy, drop it below. Let my chicken sit on that. This I'm going to put in a jar and throw it in the fridge. But we're going to let my chicken come to room temperature. And then I'm going to do a rotisserie chicken, which my husband loves and requested tonight. So that's what we're going to do. Now I've done other rotisserie chickens on, on my videos. Um, but this one's more in depth on how to prepare the chicken. Um, anyways, it's delicious. I'm going to make it with Puerto Rican rice, which I haven't done before, and uh, some zucchini. And anyways, you'll see. Okay. 
Okay, let me introduce you to my ingredients for my rotisserie chicken. We will be using, well, you'll need a whole lemon. You'll need some rosemary, generous amount. Um, sea salt, sel de Provence, black horse pepper, parsley, butter. This is uh, like three tablespoons. You'll need, uh, this is very handy, of course you won't have to have this, but this is a Bluetooth uh, temperature probe, which is amazing for your oven or your rotisserie, any other corner. It works in that oven. Works in there. Just a tip that if you have a corner rotisserie or a corner stove, this is a must. Um, some zucchini. Of course, a whole chicken. We have um, olive oil, not virgin or extra virgin, just olive oil. And it's infused with Zelda Plus. Um, if you don't have this, it's okay. You could just use regular olive oil. But you can make this easily by just adding a quarter cup of Zelle de Provence, which is a uh, herb from the south of France. Very popular. You can use it in so many things. Potatoes, roasted potatoes, vegetables, fish, meats, many things. But anyways, let it sit in the olive oil for about, oh, 30 days, and it infuses it. And it's just a lovely flavor. And when you're ready to use it, you just twist it like this and pour. Don't ever shake because there's a little hole there and a hole there and you'll have olive <laughs> oil everywhere. So, let's see. I think that covers everything. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm serving with Puerto Rican rice, but I already made the Puerto Rican rice. So, I will do another video on how to show you to make Puerto Rican rice. Cause I did spend 10 years growing up in Puerto Rico, and I love Puerto Rican rice. This is meatless. Anyways, let's start cooking. Okay, I forgot some <laughs> ingredients in my intro to my ingredients. I also have three garlic cloves, one shallot. It's right in front of me. I don't know how I could have forgotten that. And I have a black garlic. Uh, you can find them in grocery stores. Um, they're usually sold in a, a package in the uh, produce aisle. These have so much flavor and they're like peanut butter, but, well, I should say they're like the consistency of peanut butter, but it's garlic and it's just wonderful. We're gonna put that underneath the skin. Oh, you're gonna see that. It's gonna be beautiful. Okay, let's, let's get everything ready. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna. Now this is a big shallot. I don't think I need that much. So I see a little wedge in there. I'm gonna put my knife in there and try to separate it with my hands. Ugh, there we go. It started to come, but give it a little more, a little more oomph there. There we go. There. I broke that off. So I can use that. Now I'm gonna cut the part where the root comes out. Throw that to the side. You wanna make it easy on your life. Just split it in half. I don't, you know, shallots have become so big now. Like they're monster shallots. When I was a kid, these things were like, I don't know, like, small. <laughs> Not this big. But, you know, God knows how they engineer them. But anyways, so I prefer to get my shallots from the farmer's market. And even there, they're, they're big now. I guess it's just, you know, nothing maybe sinister about it, but I don't know. Okay, now I'm going to hold my shallot, and what I'm going to do is some slices. Now, if you don't know the difference between a shallot and an onion, shallot's much more uh, milder than an onion. And they're just great. You don't want to, you want to try something different that adds a little more mild taste. I highly recommend it. Okay, slight chop on these guys. 
you don't have these, they're wonderful. Um, to organize your cooking. Um, it makes it easy. And also, most importantly for me, I won't forget to do it. I got it right here, right in front of me. Alright, I'm getting a little tears from that shallot. Alright, I'm going to take my garlic. mixes the oils of the garlic into the uh, the meaty part of the garlic, which just gives it a really nice flavor. Actually, it's the most strongest flavor you can get from the garlic. Okay. Ooh, I'm going to have to wash my hands because that's how it really got to me. Um, 
break into the garlic yet. So you want it like that. For now I'm just gonna put that right there. Okay, where's my... There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna take my chicken. Yeah, I've left it for 30 minutes to room temperature. And very important, 30 minutes, not more than an hour. Don't even get close to an hour. 30 minutes to 45 minutes, that's it. Get your chicken going. But anyways, 30 minutes gives you a half an hour to work with it. You know, the, you know there's a risk that you could get bacteria or whatever after an hour. But anyways, so moving along, I'm going to first loosen my, oh, before I do that, I need some string to toss my chicken and get more than what you think and more is better because if you don't have enough, you got to go back. <laughs> All right, so. Where's my pepper? There it is. There's my salt. All right, one hand. I pull the chicken, season it nicely in there. There we go. And then pepper. Steve likes two pinches. There we go. Then my zeb de Provence in there as well. And then I'm going to throw that parsley in there. I'm going to throw one of these rosemaries in here. Throw all these lemons. And take a little garlic. About, about half of what you got. Throw it in there. I'm going to take some shallots. About half of what you got. Mix it in there with your fingers and then drop it. Now, it's important to show you this. You're going to loosen the skin. I'm going to try to do it backwards like this. But, all right. So, what you want to find is where the meat and the skin touch. See right there? And then you're going to separate it with your fingers. So, I'm going to turn this. It's just a little easier for me. There we go. Sorry. So I went by the wishbone. I mean, not the wishbone, the spine. And you see how I'm doing that? And then right here, you want to gently do that to get that skin separated. I gotta, sorry, I gotta do it this way because. This is a little tight for me. Okay. You gotta work your finger in there. And once you do, once you get it started, it'll come easily. And then what I do is I take the back of a knife and just push gently. There we go. And go down into towards the the thigh. Gently, gently. And down to the thigh. You see this? So up, gently, gently, down to the thigh. And that loosen the whole darn thing for you. Okay. Now. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to take some butter. And I'm going to push a piece as far as I can and I'm push, pulling it along with the skin. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm going to take some pepper, drop it there, uh, right by the, 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 where, the breast and, where the separation of the skin. And I'm just going to add my zeal de Provence there. I'm going to add my salt, all that. And then push and push and like that. 
and then push in, push in on the other side. See how easy that is? And I'm getting that in there. Okay. Now, this is tricky. Point it in, out. So put the soft in first, or else you're gonna pierce your your uh, the skin. And we don't want to do that. And you're gonna gently try to prevent any hard sticks. So here you would go even more careful because this has like a pretty good end. And I'm gonna write this again and go a little higher this time. And I'm, I'm helping the skin come up so I don't break it, break the skin. If you break the skin, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, but it's better that you don't. So I'm pushing the rosemary down, and I'm pushing the other stick in there. And there. Now I'm going to add more butter. And another butter. And then I'm going to add lemon. All oh, that goodness is going in there. And I'm going to try to keep pushing everything as far in as I can. This takes a few minutes, but it's worth it. It is worth it. Try it. And it just keeps everything on the rotisserie. If you bake a chicken in the oven, you could do the same thing. Now, another piece there. And another piece there. Oh, my gosh. I don't want it to fold. I don't want it to fold. I want to lay flat in there. There we go. Let's see if I can massage this in. There. Pushing that butter in. Oh, my gosh. It takes a little patience to do this. And I'm going to drop one more. One more. That lovely butter in there. Because it's going to it's going to melt, it's going to go down into the thigh, it's going to coat that breast. And I'm going to push and push and push and push and push. Notice how the butter is all <laughs> by the wishbone now. And I'm pushing, pushing, but gently. I ripped it here a little bit, and I'll show you how to fix that. See how I ripped it there? This is why I got extra lemons. Put that right there, and I cover my rip part. Right there, and cover at the end. All right, what am I forgetting? I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I'm gonna take some that parsley, stick it in there. I think that's what I forgot. I always forget something. Oh, my black garlic! <laughs> I knew I was forgetting something. Okay. It's not too late. I'm going to rip this black garlic in half and I'm going to push it in there, press down, and smush it in there. I should have done that earlier, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. I'm just going to push it down, press it in there. There. Lemon's dead. Okay. Let's do this. There's my string. There's my Zelle de Provence. And I should have worn my apron. Because I get my shirt dirty, I'm going to get in trouble. Alright. Alright. Let's tie this bird up. Okay. Super easy. This is Steve's way. There's tons of videos how to do this, but I don't know. I, I've always done it this way, and it's easy Stevie. So I'm going to bring that across, bring that up, get that out of the way, under, and over. And then loosen. I'm just going to tie it. And then, again. Now, I'm going to go, gosh, it's so hard for you guys.
you guys see it. Sorry guys, I, I don't have the budget for an overhead camera. I don't think I want overhead camera in my kitchen either. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to cut under, all the way around, and we're just going to plump up that breast. And the reason we do this is that we want it to cook evenly. So we're going to make the knot right show you right where the wings are so I'm going to put the knot right there and there we go easy peasy okay now we're going to flip the bird and notice go over the wings and then I'm going to do a loop over here. That way it doesn't move around too much. And bring that tight. Like that. And flip it over. And look at that. Look how easy that is. Now, never done this. It'll take you a couple times, but if you don't just get it right, it's okay to cut the string and just tie it here and do the loop, whatever you have to do. Sometimes I mess it up, and that's what I do. Okay, one more knot, and we're easy peasy. There we go, trust chicken out of that Steve. Get all that extra string out because it's just gonna flap all over the place. Okay, now we're ready. I'm, you know, I'm gonna put my apron to I'm gonna mess with the olive oil. Oh. Oh. There we go. My apologies. We're having fun. All right. Uh, mix my olive oil in the Zelle de Provence. And this is the magic of this. Uh, I'll, sh well, I'll show you. No, but anyways, drop that olive oil and generously with the Zelle de Provence. Don't be shy. I'm going to drop the garlic on there. There we go. Shallots, they'll fall off, but that's okay. I'm going to put some pepper. Yeah. Uh, three good pinches. And salt. I'm using sea salt. Too much sodium in our diets. Everybody's diets in the United States, so it's good to, to do that. Now I'm just going to massage, get into the, the chicken's pits here, toss it, grab that garlic, that shallot, and rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it. Massage your chicken. Give it a nice massage. All that flavor and this is crucial this is so important chicken look at that all right get those wings get in those little corners okay beautiful oh I can like that okay I got some extra Grab that, I'm just sticking it in the cavity. Why waste flavor, huh? There we go. Perfect. Okay. Grab my rag. Wipe my hands so I can do the last part. And 
Go this way. Now when you're doing this, be careful of your strength. Alright. Now I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna position it. And yeah, I like where that is. So we're gonna push that in and tighten it. Now this screwdriver, I only use it for this. And dishwash it, da da da. With a brand new screwdriver. I just give it a little a little turn. You don't want to overdo it. Um, and here we're gonna push that in so we seal it. See how I'm bringing the skin in? And I'm pushing it in, pushing it in, and I'm gonna make it nice and tight. Give it a quick turn. history is heating up. I've had it now, oh, I don't know, three, four months. And it is the best toy I ever bought. Toy. It's definitely not a toy, but anyways. Does a great job. And uh, so somebody asked me well, actually, let me just go to this. I'm gonna drop a little Zelda Pomos on my zucchini here. I will add my Spanish, uh, excuse me, my Puerto Rican rice later. A little salt on them. And a little bit of pepper, and then the juices from the rotisserie will do the rest on these. All right, throw that guy in. And I'm just gonna put them like that. And then I can turn this and it'll just cook it evenly. Now, we're gonna put our probe into this beautiful chicken. And we're gonna put it into the breast. Be careful not to hit any bones. Boom. And then I'm gonna simply pick it up. Bring it in. Drop this. I also do it backwards. <laughs> Got it. There we go. All right. And then we're going to turn this guy on. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about the rotisserie. And um, I would suggest you do contact uh, La Corner. Um, um, they have like different salespeople across the country and ask them directly. Uh, I don't work for La Cornera. I don't. I'm just a homeowner that owns La Cornera and just loves it. Um, they don't pay me. They gave me this though, this apron. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, it's just a great product. Um, and somebody asked me a couple questions. Um, online, on emails, comments. One was uh, the odor. Is there an odor in the house? Um, no. <laughs> what you smell is the chicken cooking and it's amazing. Um, it does put flavor smells in your house, which is awesome. It's one of my favorite features. Another question was, does it put off a lot of heat? Now on high, it will put some heat out. Of course it will, it has flames there. But on medium, medium low, 
uh, you know, it's not an issue. Even on high, it's not an issue unless you're standing right here. Um, I have air conditioning, it's not an issue at all. And uh, even when that, when it was spring and I didn't have the air conditioning, you know, it, it was fine. Um, you do want to have ventilation. If you notice that my kitchen isn't complete, I'm working on getting the hood and all that. We're just trying to figure out which hood to do. Um, but I do have a vent, uh, an exhaust vent uh, over here that I turn on, or you can crack a window just in case, but I have zero issues, but you should have some kind of exhaust. Um, what was another question I got? Um, how simple it is to use, um, watch my videos. I mean, it's, it's really simple. You put it on there and then you just walk away and you just check on it. If you want to base, you base, and that, that's it. So I hope I answered all your questions about the, the actual rotisserie from my Kona. Um, and then we're gonna come back when this chicken is looking like something, probably it's gonna take an hour and a half. I'm gonna actually now lower the heat to the medium. And we'll go from there. Oh, and the temperature thing. That's a, right here, right, it's a, it says 80 degrees. All right, back here. Uh, well, it takes a while, let me just reset it. There we go. Back here, it's uh, 74 degrees. So there you have it. Okay, so look at that chicken. It is looking gorgeous. I added the Spanish rice. The chicken thermometer was reading 150, uh, 145 degrees. I added the rice, mixed it, mixed it into that beautiful chicken drippings. We don't want to add it too soon because we don't want to dry out the, the rice. But look at that. Probably another eight minutes, nine minutes. And it's been an hour and 24 minutes since it's been cooking. The room temperature overall, 73 degrees. So, you know, there you go. People asking if it warms up the room. It does. Right here, I definitely feel it. But that's not an issue. This smells amazing. Okay. So my internal temperature was at 167. I am going to rest this guy and I'm just going to pull my levers like that out. And everything's going to rest. I'm going to let my chicken rest. Look at the beauty of that. Pull my plate out a little bit. But look at that chicken. Look at the rice. Look at my squash. Oh my gosh. Delicious. So we're going to let it rest and serve. Alright. We're ready to serve. And look at this rice. Look at this chicken. So, I pulled it all the way out on my foam bay rotisserie to let it rest. Now that I'm ready to serve, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to pull this out. So it rested for 15 minutes. And now, I just dropped that chicken in there. Be careful, it's very hot. And, oh. Gosh, I'm gonna bring this. I'm gonna put a platter here. I got my cutting board here so that I can cut my chicken and watch my other videos to how to cut my chicken. Pull out your thermometer there, release your chicken, 
and we will carve and serve. There we go. Releasing that. Releasing that. And I like to do it this way. Boom. Look at that. Now, I'm going to take this out. Oh, there we go. And I'm just going to drop it in the sink. Be careful, everything is super hot. And I'm going to carve the chicken. And that's pretty simple. So we're going to take this. I'm going to get my little scissors. Snip out all the strings I, I did. Look how pretty that is. If we can get in here, I mean, it's just gorgeous. So, just pull all the string. Oh. And the chicken is just going to fall apart. Okay, so I am going to put some beautiful Puerto Rican rice onto the plate. Yeah, put some. Zucchini, and I'm going to put a chicken breast, look at that, beautiful, I wish you could smell this. I'm going to garnish it with a little parsley, this plate's very hot, so always use a mitt, but there you have it, oh, maybe a little more rice. My husband loves Puerto Rican rice, so we'll put a little more. There we go. Bon appetit. Bon soir. Please subscribe. Check my other videos. I do a lot of videos on French cooking, and I hope you enjoy it. Anyways, thank you.